Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hartford, Connecticut for our Hartford Whalers expansion franchise regular season home opener. And here we go, Scott Lawton at center ice with Mark Sheafley. And Winnipeg wins the draw as Pionk takes it into the zone. There we see Dimitri Orloff, number seven, for the first time. Morrissey with a nice shot on net. And it's saved by Murray, who pokes it away. Now Kane with it, dumps it off to Mangiapane. Loose puck up the ice. Goes over to Kyle Connor, who feeds it up to Wheeler. And it looks like we're going to have a penalty right out of the gate here against Hartford. And I want to say that was slashing. Was that Patty Kane? Oh, man. Well, there's your first look at Patrick Kane as a Hartford Whaler. And not even a minute, just over a minute into the game, he's already in the penalty box. And he is not happy about it. You can't be doing those things, Kane. So a defensive zone face-off right out of the gate as we are short-handed. Winnipeg wins the, another, another draw. Pionk over to Sam Gagne, who gives it back to Nita Ryder. Backhands it over to Foligno, will pick it up, and he, go, he marches into the offensive zone. Foligno into the zone over to Confer, who can't get the shot off, but then does, and it's a blocker saved by Hellebuck for Hartford's first shot on goal. Foligno playing good defense there, using the body. Now Sam Gagne tries to give to Ayafalo, who recovers to Viardi, but Barry intercepts it as Stanley tries to clear the zone, and it just gets out as one minute remains on this Winnipeg power play. Sam Gagne now with it, poked away by Stanley. Foligno picks it up, but he can't clear the zone. Back to Foligno, and he does get the clear this time, although it doesn't break pat it doesn't even get into winnipeg territory i follow gets in back to pionk and murray just is able to survive there on a tough uh a nice chance there from winnipeg felino again with it as the seconds tick down here so our per our first penalty kill is a, a success we already with it dumps behind the net back to i follows quick wrist there from uh, Sam Gagne on the one-timer, but a nice save from Murray as Stanley takes it up into the zone, the former Winnipeg Jet, over to Kane, who's out of the box, to Tyson Berry on the one-timer, and Hellebuck makes the save. A nice penalty kill there early on for Hartford as we have our top line back out there, matched up against uh, Winnipeg's top line. Lawton wins the draw. But Harford can't retain possession in their offensive zone as Mark Schleifley will take it up ice. Brings it back, it passes in front, and then another glove save by Matt Murray. Winnipeg with a few good chances here in the first five minutes. Now we'll get our look, our first look here at Leo Carlson as he's accompanied by Victor Olofsson and Victor Arvidsson, his fellow Swedes. There goes Josh Brown. His pass is intercepted. Loose puck back to Brown. Who skates it back behind the net. He's upended. And now Carlson takes it. Gives it back to Brown. Let's just get it out of the zone here. As Grizzlick takes it up, he'll clear it in. It's recovered by Dylan DeMello for Winnipeg. Wheeler takes it into the zone. Passes to Kyle Connor. As the puck trickles back behind the net. And then Shifley. Got, oh my goodness. Shifley with a good rip. And Blake Wheeler cleans it up as Winnipeg takes a 1-0 lead here. Really not much Murray can do about that one. That was just a clear rebound. Wide open net. And Wheeler finished. You look at Murray just in despera desperation mode there. As Blake Wheeler, the longtime NHLer, adds another goal to his career total. There's Leo Carlson right there in front trying to play some defense. So they'll stay out on the ice to our second line, and hopefully they can get some offense going. What a line that is for Winnipeg. Blake Wheeler, Kyle Connor, and Mark Shifley. Speaking of Mark Shifley, it's worth note. I think I might have called him Shifley in the beginning of the game. Yikes. I do mess up some of these pronunciations sometimes, even though I do know how to say it. Uh, here goes Appleton in front, and Murray closes the door. What I was getting at is Mark Shifley 
Um, it's very, very early, obviously, but I was looking ahead at some potential free agents, and there were like about 10 or so that really stood out, and he is at probably among, at the top of our list as far as uh, our wish list coming this summer in free agency, but we're far away from there as we're still in the first period of our, our, of our regular season debut. There we go, it's the Law and Kane Mangiapani line. Let's get some energy from them. That's what, uh, that's what we expect out of them. Winnipeg owning the face-off circle here to start this game. Kane throwing the body. He takes the puck, and look at that speed up ice. Look at that speed from Patty Kane. Breaks into the zone, and he scores! Patrick Kane with the first goal in Hartford Whalers history. He was probably the favorite to score the goal and he gets it done. Patty Kane ties the game just a few, a couple minutes after Winnipeg's goal. And yeah, we want to keep that one. Wow. Patty Kane just stormed into the zone. He actually falls down after the goal. He gets hit, but what a goal there from Patrick Kane to tie this game up for Hartford. Lawton wins the draw to CC, who passes it back up to Kane. He gets double. He gets kind of sandwiched there, but loose puck in Hartford's uh, favor. Lawton gets tripped, so now Hartford is going to go on a power play just moments after scoring a game tying goal as Mason Appleton goes to the box for tripping. Lawton was the one who, uh, he's usually the one committing the trip, but he was the, he was the trippy there, if that's a word. Now Hartford on the power play as Winnipeg wins the draw, but Lawton gets it. Ghani's able to steal. And he clears it down. Arvidsson picks it up, passes up to Zadina. And a good play there by 88. I believe that's Schmidt. Arvidsson with it as he gets in the goal. Oh wow! I thought he had a, I thought he was going to score forehand there, but it kind of gets blocked there in front. As Sandberg recovers, nice hit there. Was that Grizzly? Grizzly with a nice hit there. We don't really expect him to. He's a defenseman, but we don't expect him to be throwing the body like that. He's more of obviously an offensive guy, as he's uh kind of leaned on to be the quarterback of this power play line. Lawton into Zadina. Nice wrister, but it's blocked away by Hellbuck. Confer now in front of the net. Back to Grizzly with a shot. It's blocked by his own player, Victor Harvidson. Sandberg tries to clear. It's picked up by Gagne along the boards. And he barely gets it out as less than 10 seconds here on this Hartford power play. Confer, a stretch pass in front, but it's stolen by Winnipeg as they return to full strength. There's Appleton out of the box. Now up to Sandberg. Lawton playing some defense on Appleton. This pass goes wide behind the net. Picked up by Zadina. Matt Grizzly with it. Over to Lawton. He skates up ice. Back to Arvidsson. And he loses the puck. Ends up with Hell on Hellbuck's um, pad and covered for a faceoff. There you go. Leo Carlson's first game in the NHL. Big things to come here for the Swede, the fourth overall pick for the Hartford Whalers, our first draft pick in franchise history. Well, since the rebirth, that is. And um, as I said in the first episode, or second episode, or it was the second episode when we did the NHL draft, you would have to think he ends up um, our franchise leader in points. I mean, you would hope so. See how far we can get in this, uh, this series. Winnipeg with the puck in front, Connor. Can't get a clean shot off. Murray, desperation mode, and he covers up. Connor couldn't quite put it home there as Murray was uh, was back on the ground. Here we go, our first look at this fourth line. As we saw Felino on the penalty kill, penalty kill earlier, now Jake Evans and Nolan Patrick are out there as well with Tyson Berry and Logan Stanley. Evans passes over to Felino. Battles with Wheeler at the boards. Wheeler wins the battle. Poked away by Stanley. Evans gets it. Turns up ice. Back to Barry. Up to Patrick as Barry gets laid out. 
Patrick skates in, and it's taken over by Morrissey. Up to Connor. As Connor skates in, tries to get the pass across, but it doesn't go, and then he ends up with it again. A backhand attempt is saved by Murray. As we'll get an, uh, another defensive zone faceoff here with 436 left in a 1-1 game in the first period. Evans wins the draw. Back to Orlov, who passes it up to Patrick, who enters the zone, and he's hit very hard there. Wow, what a big hit there by uh, Dylan. Niederreiter dumps it in. It's retrieved by CeCe. He kicks it up the boards, and it's um, taken over by Evans, I believe that was, to Foligno, who enters the zone. Kind of looks at his options here. Pass across for Evans is intercepted by Niederreiter as Winnipeg retakes possession. Dylan does a little maneuvering. He gets a nice pass up to Viardi, who passes over to Ehlers, who gets the shot off, and Viardi finishes the rebound. Wow, we just gave Winnipeg way too much space there. Gabe Viardi, I believe he was a, a free agent signing here for Winnipeg. Yeah, I believe he signed a three-year deal there. He was only their, uh, he was really their only big addition this offseason. And he scores in his per first period as a Winnipeg Jet. As Murray just could hit another rebound goal here. And Ehlers is right there to put it home. So now we have our first line back out there as we trail 2-1. to one. We already wins the draw to DeMeo. It looks like we just we got a penalty. I want to say interference or roughing. And that Ehlers shot is kind of blocked but still gets on net. And Mangiapane goes for cross-checking. So not where we want to be committing a penalty after giving up a, a go-ahead goal. Hopefully we can get another penalty kill here. Where was well, that was a weak call? Where was the penalty ref? I didn't see one. So here we go. Jake Evans and Victor Olofsson, who's out there for Mangiapane on this penalty kill line. He's not usually a penalty killer. Wheeler has a shot in front. And then he gets another chance off a Shifley pass, but it's stoned there by Matt Murray. Shifley, Wheeler, and Ehlers out there for this Winnipeg power play. As Confer wins the draw, Barry tries to clear, but it hits off Confer, and it stays in the zone. Ehlers over to Morrissey, who skates up, gets a shot off, save Murray. Morrissey back to Wheeler, in front to Ehlers. Loose puck back to Wheeler, who gets a shot off and another save by Matt Murray. We got to get this out. I, feel, I don't feel good about this. Shifley back to Connor, over to Wheeler. Another pa penalty. Logan Stanley for slashing. And look at that. It shows Mangiapane skating into the box, even though he was already in the box. Ugh. All right, so it's going to be five on three as we have just committed our third penalty here in this first period. We have a minute 10 down five on three. As Lawton gets tied up, Gagne with the puck, Orlov, a nice defensive play, and he can't get the clear off. Pionk to Iafalo, shot blocked, over to Pionk in the corner, back to Niederreiter, who skates in. He'll get a shot, nice rebound attempt there, but no one home to put it, put it in the net. Lawton clears it, 30 seconds left here on 5-on-3 hockey. Pionk turns up ice, over to Iafalo, or over to Niederreiter. Nice poke check there from Orlov. And Scott Lawton is tripped again. He draws another penalty. I think it was a penalty. I don't see delayed. It wasn't a penalty. Wow. Was that not a blatant trip there on Scott Lawton? Did I miss that? I guess, yeah, they only, they only like to call him on Scotty. They don't like to give him the benefit of the doubt on him. So we got absolutely dominated there in that first period. Outshot 16-5. And Winnipeg had just about double our time on attack. So we got to shore it up here in the second period. And we got to stay out of the box. Confer and Shifley take the draw start to open the second period as Hartford wins it back to CeCe. And he'll pass it up to Confer, who has some space. 
He gets a shot off, but it's turned away by Hellbuck. And Morrissey, a penalty for charging. So now we'll go to four on four hockey for 39 seconds. And we can call those power plays killed. So as we go to three for three on the penalty kill here early on in this game. There we go with Scott Lawton and Patty Kane. Shifley wins the, the draw. Peon can't get it up. Kane passes back to Orlov. In front to Lawton, who can't get the shot off as Connor's there to stop it. Over to Shifley, who turns up ice, enters the zone. And good defense there combined between Orlov and Kane are free agent additions. There we go with Leo Carlson trying to make something happen. Gets it. Wow, who was that? Was that Allison? Allison uh, skidded out there, but now he recovers. Gives it to Kane, who gives it to CC. Crosses center ice. Cody CC with it in front of Kane, and it's blocked by Pionk. As Hartford has 30 seconds left here on this power play, as Winnipeg gets a clear. Mangiapane over to Kane. And it trickles back in the zone. Mangiapane over to Carlson. And this is, we can't even get it out of our own zone as the power play comes to an end. Olofsson with it, though, and he can't get his shot off. He does get the loose puck, though, but he's fended off there by Pionk. Kyle Connor skates into the zone, very tired after a long shift. Over to Pionk, back to Niederreiter, and it's saved by Murray. Nice uh, puck movement there from Winnipeg, although I think they did an extra pass there. I think they could have just uh, took the shot on that after that initial pass. Carlson with it. He gets hooked, so another penalty here. Is that three for three uh, each side on penalties? Kind of excessive here. So our first game, there was seven total penalties, I think, six for from us one from philly and then last game i think we only had one penalty and pittsburgh had two or one so um so far varied results and uh we'll definitely keep an eye on these penalty sliders so scott Long's out there to take the draw on a power play back to arvidson who gives it to Grizzlick. back to arvidson zadina ends up with it who gives it back to arvidson back to Grizzlick with a shot which goes wide or maybe it might have been tipped there by hellbuck lawton over to arvidson Back to Grizzlick. Lawton with it. Turns away. Turns off two Winnipeg defenders. And Victor Arvidsson's wrister is gloved by Hellbuck. We need to do a better job at, you know, getting some space there on the power play. We're kind of just playing in a condensed area. we got to spread it out. As Lawton's back out there for the draw, he wins it. Grizzlick with it, shot, uh, pad save there from Hellbuck. Zadina tries to get a centered pass, but it's intercepted as Kapari gets a clear across center ice. Grizzlick up to Zadina, nice pass. Zadina's rocked. Gets back up, although uh, Winnipeg will get another clear, but it's blocked off there by Grizzlick, who makes the jumping catch. He'll bring it like all the way back into his zone. Arvidsson up to Zadina as 30 seconds remain on this power play. It's poked. Zadina up to Confer, which was a nice save there from um, Hellbuck on the one-timer. Grizzlick picks it up, back to Arvidsson. He's going to give it to Confer as his power play comes to an end. Ayafalo steals it, passes up to Dylan, who gives it to Connor. Takes it into the zone. Blocked by Grizzlick, who gives it to Zadina. Skates up ice. Nice defense there from Schmidt as he takes it back from Zadina. Niederreiter with it, peels up ice into the zone. He'll get a shot off, and it's gloved by Matt Murray. All right, so we definitely needed those power plays this period, even though we didn't score, just to kind of give Matt Murray a rest back there. He was tested early and often, but now it's good to see him kind of get a little um, stabilized. As he makes another save there off the faceoff. That was Sandberg for Winnipeg. Our fourth line's out there now with Evans on the draw. He does win it, but it goes to a Winnipeg player. Sandberg to Viardi. And a weak puck is, t is uh, taken in by Matt Murray. 
There we saw Stanley getting into it with someone after the whistle there, the former Winnipeg Jet. Another face-off here on defensive zone. This one won by Winnipeg, and it goes to a Hartford player. So that was kind of reversed from the last face-off. Evans dumps it in. Picked up by Sandberg. Gives it to Ehlers. Schmidt can't get a clean reception, but he does recover. Need a rider back to Ehlers. In front, it's poked away there by Matt Murray. Foligno takes it up ice into the zone. Gets in front, a nice shot, and it's blocked. It's a save there by Hellbuck. Another shot, and another save from Hellbuck. Who we gotta say, our for our first game, it's kind of rough facing um, the top five goalie in the league, and he's certainly played well to this point halfway through this game. Patrick Kane dumps it in. Loose puck behind the net, picked up by Dylan. Passes up to Niederreiter, over to Demello. The Mayo, the Mello. I'll say it both ways this this uh this game just so I I can say I did it right. There you go, Demello. Next time I'll say Demayo though. Patrick Kane deeks in, Demayo picks it up, and Appleton will skate with it. Trying to find something. He finds Adam Lowry who gives it over to Ayafalo, skates into the zone. Gets a shot in front, and it's gloved by Matt Murray. So the pace here kind of slowing down in this second period after a pretty energetic first period, I would say, especially early on. Got to remember, Winnipeg's one of the better defensive teams in the league, and uh, they come off of a very successful season despite a uh, first-round exit. So they're looking to make make their way back into the Western Conference playoffs this season. Leo Carlson passes over to Orlov. Takes it into the zone. And his pass gets intercepted by Shifley. Wheeler takes it up. And his pass is intercepted by Cody Cece. Cece over to Orlov. Up to Arvidsson who takes it into the zone. Gets in front of the net. Shot. Save. Rebound. Goal! Victor Arvidsson scores off his own rebound, and the Harford Whalers tie this game yet again. The yeah, Hellbook just couldn't handle it there. That was a good initial save, but just <clears throat> excuse me, too much space there for Arvidsson and on an open net. As the Hartford Whalers tie this game yet again here, as we're uh, we have about five and a half minutes left in this second period, assist there to uh, Dmitry Orlov and Cody Cece. Blake Wheeler with it in the corner, gives it back to Morrissey over to Pionk with the shot blocked in traffic. Orlov picks it up over to Arvidsson, takes it into the zone. Gives it back to Olofsson with a shot and save by Connor Hellbuck. Now we have our third line, who we haven't seen much of. I mean, at least I don't remember hearing uh, Nick, Col Nick Cousins at all, but almost said Nick Collins, former uh, Packers safety. So now Grizzlick with it gets the shot. Saved by Hellbuck. Zadina with it. Battling for the puck against Sandberg. Sandberg comes up with it. Up to Shifley. Takes it across ice. And the puck dribbles into Hartford's zone. Picked up by Matt Grizzlick. Still with it. it gives up to Zadina. And Zadina loses possession. Although he gives a nice hit there to Nate Schmidt. As Winnipeg takes it into the zone. Connor tries a deke. And it's closed off there by Grizzlick. Who will pass over to Kompfer. So Comfort takes it up, almost runs into his own player. Over to Cousins, back to Zadina, who just didn't have enough leverage there that far um, at that angle. Another save there by Hellbuck. All right, we got our first line out there now against Winnipeg's fourth line, as we see uh, Kane and Schmidt right there, two, uh, two number 88s. Winnipeg wins the draw over to Schmidt. Up to Sangani, now to Gustafsson. And there's an offside. Apologize when the screen goes black like that. Um, 
I guess when I don't touch the controller for so long, it will just fade out like that. And I, I don't know how to fix that in the when I upload. So apologies about that. I know it's not the biggest inconvenience, but annoying nonetheless. Although I think uh, you viewers will be all right. I don't think that's uh, hopefully not going to stray anyone away from the rest of this video. Mangiapani with it. He'll recover back to Stanley. And a delayed penalty there from Winnipeg, so we have some time. Although there's only 15 seconds left. I was going to say we have some time to develop a play with the extra attacker, but he didn't even get out in time. So Sam Gagne heads to the box for Winnipeg's fourth penalty of the game. See, I don't think that's a penalty. I might have to lower the holding slider a little bit. Now we have Leo Carlson out there with Patrick Kane and Victor Olofsson on our power play unit as Lowry wins the draw for Winnipeg. Four seconds. Just get a shot. Back to Kane with a shot, and it's blocked by Mangiapane. So we go to the third period, tied 2-2, two to two, and we will have the man advantage as we start the third period. This should be a wild ride and a great finish. As we recovered a lot of ground there, in the second period and um now we we were almost winnipeg almost doubled our time on attack and now we actually have more time on attack than them so hopefully we can keep this momentum going here in the third period as winnipeg wins the draw as they take over on the penalty kill morrissey gives it up to i follow loose puck picked up by hartford although Olsen was hit and he loses possession now lowry with it takes it into the zone Nice move there. His pass gets intercepted by Patrick Kane as Harford in transition here with Olsen and Kane. Olsen up to Kane. Oh, off the post. And it's off the post again. The loose puck in front would just not go for Patrick Kane. Wow, what a sequence there as Harford's still with it in the zone. Back to Olsen in front, and he can't get a clean shot off. Rebound picked up by Dylan. He'll try and get it up to his teammate Lowry, who's pickpocketed by Patrick Kane. Tries a deke attempt, but loses his puck possession. What a crazy sequence there still by uh, moments ago on that save by Connor Hellbuck. Five seconds here as the power play tricks down, trickles down. Olofsson stood up at the blue line. Barry gives to Olofsson, who's very tired there after a long shift. And we're going to have to get him off the ice. He has no stamina left. I mean, every time Patty Kane's out there, he's making plays. What a good signing that's already proving to be. He'll skate it in, and then he stood up there by number two for Winnipeg. I believe that was DeMeo. Carlson with it over to Kane to Mangiapane. Lead pass there for Olsen, who's still out on the ice. Oh, my goodness. He loses it to Niederreiter, who feeds it up to Viardi, enters the zone. Back to Niederreiter in front. Pad saved by Matt Murray. Niederreiter in front. Another pad saved by Matt Murray as Leo Carlson's pass was intercepted. At a very bad spot. Another save there from Murray, who's now under duress. Ehlers fires one, and it's wide. Viardi with it in front. Backhand save. And Niederreiter had a shot to put that rebound home, but he couldn't finish. Carlson, very tired. We need, we need a stoppage here. Viardi in front. Barry ends up with it. Some big despera desperation moments for these goaltenders here early on in this third period. There should be a lot of drama to close this game. Can we get a line change? Just still Kane. He's refusing to, to get off the ice. As Finally now he skates over for the line change. As we get a stoppage, as Matt Murray corrals the puck up near his chest. 13-29 remain in this third period of a tie game between Hartford and Winnipeg. As Nick Cousins against Mark Scheifele on the faceoff. Cousins wins back to Arlov. Orlov feeds it over to CeCe. Skates it into the zone. Peels back a little bit and loses possession to Kyle Connor, who you don't want skating up ice. But nice, nice play there by Orlov. He's been definitely our best defender in this game so far. So Orlov and Kane are free agent additions playing very, very well so far in their debuts. Our third line still back out there against Winnipeg's first line. That shot goes wide or deflected, I believe. 
And we'll get another defensive zone faceoff as still our third line is out there. There we go. Faceoff win by Cousins as Orlov gives it up to Comfer. Comfer wheels it in. Back behind the net now in a puck battle with Connor. Now more board play with Zena against Schmidt. Schmidt wins it. As he feeds to Sandberg, who it's taken away by Cece, who's also had a strong showing here in this third period. Cece skates it in over to Zadina. Back to Confer with the wrister, and it's saved by Hellbuck. Now, this third period has definitely picked up in action after that kind of uh, dull second period. Evans wins the draw over to Patrick. Loose puck will end up on the stick of Nate Schmidt, who gives it up to Kapari. CeCe with another takeaway, as he's laid out there by 19 for Winnipeg. Kapari with it, just feeds it in, and Murray will freeze it with less than 10 minutes now in this third period. Upcoming games there. Our fourth line remains out there against Winnipeg's fourth line. Nice face-off win there by Jake Evans as Nolan Patrick picks it up. Crosses center ice into the zone. Feeds it back for Foligno, but it's picked up by Sam Gagne on the interception. As Gustafson feeds it to Kapari into the zone. He'll lose possession, picked up by Grizzlick, who gets absolutely rocked there by Kapari. Morrissey over to Pionk. Kapari in front over to Gagne with a shot. Glove save, Matt Murray. That was a big hit on Matt Grizzlick and... uh. You hope to see one of your teammates, maybe Foligno, in that situation come to his aid. And I would love, love to see a fight. A fight in this game uh, would have been awesome. I'm pretty sure that when you do CPU versus CPU, they do fight. But not very often, I guess. Grizzlick with it off the faceoff win. Pickpocketed there by Viardi. Grizzlick stretch pass to Patrick. Who can't get past Morrissey. Morrissey's loose puck goes to Josh Brown. Over to Patrick. Up to... Jake Evans. Evans peels back to Brown with a shot blocked by Niederreiter. And a trip penalty there by Felino. So with 6.53 left here in the third period, Winnipeg will go on a timely power play. Tripping and holding, those are the big ones we're seeing so far, as far as penalties go. So I'll give it another game or two, and uh, if it keeps up this heavy... I'll lower the sliders, but last game we really didn't have any penalties, so if it's every other game, I don't mind. That's pretty realistic. Lawton wins the clutch uh, penalty kill, or um, face off in the defensive zone, and Shifley picks it up as Stanley cannot clear it, and uh, risky. That was that was that Shifley had the you know the game on his stick essentially there, and uh, Murray closes the door. We got to clear those out. Lawton back on the draw against Viardi, and he wins it again over to Barry. Who's able to clear it up ice into Winnipeg zone. I have follow over to Viardi. And was that Gagne? Gagne couldn't handle. He recovers and gets a weak shot, which is gloved by Murray. All right, now we'll have JT Comfort on the draw. He already wins it back to Pionk over to Niederreiter to Gagne. I follow in front, and the loose puck was there for Viardi to put home, but he didn't get possession of it. Orlov's clear attempt fails as Niederreiter picks it up. His pass over across ice is intercepted by Comfort, who has some space going in. He'll get a shot off, and it's stoned by Hellbuck. Another draw, at least this time now, in offensive territory as we have Scott Lawton and Victor Arvidsson out there. Arvidsson, typically not a penalty killer, but with the Foligno penalty, that's who's out there on this line. And that's Niederreiter who picked it up. Stretch pass over to Gagne, who gets close. Shot! And the rebound goes home for Aya Fallo. Another rebound goal here against Matt Murray, and that's proven to be his Achilles heel here in this game. And that's a power play goal for Winnipeg. 
So we are not going to be 100% on the penalty kill this season. <laughs> that was that was the goal, right? And we already just had enough room to get it in there past Matt Murray. So now Winnipeg takes a 3-2 to two lead here in the third period with 5.17 remaining. Leo Carlson loses to Dragan Shifley. And Carlson has not really looked good in this game at all. And Connor puts a little salt in the wound with a quick wrist. That was a, a nice snapshot. And Kyle Connor, one of the best power forwards in the league. Another, another goal here from Winnipeg, just seconds apart. And now with five minutes remaining, Hartford has a two-goal deficit to overcome. You can't give him that space. And he beats Murray. Blocker side. Put it right where he needed to. All right, let's try this again. Winnipeg up 4-2 to two with five minutes left here in the third period as Carlson loses his outbodied on another, another draw. Puck goes into the zone, picked up by Tyson Berry. Mike Streifle is there on defense, and he'll end up with it. Kyle Connor again, his wrist shot gets deflected and saved by Matt Murray. Let's go. We got to get a little magic going. We have four minutes to score. Um, I, I'm just thinking back to that opportunity Pat Kane had earlier when um, just a wide open net hit, hit, hits off the post and he had a couple more chances and uh, just couldn't finish. That would have been something. So Tyson Berry will give over to Mangiapani. Tries to dig his way in. Up to Lawton ends up with it. A nice shot in front, but it's saved. Barry gets a shot through, but it doesn't go. That was almost deflected in through traffic. Shifley with it. Loses possession. As he passes over to Wheeler after picking it back up. Wheeler still with it in front of the net. And kick save there from Matt Murray. Kyle Connor now with it. As he's um, battled there by Scott Lawton. Lowen Stanley will pick it up and give up to Patrick Kane. He'll skate it into the zone. Back to Barry. Over to Mangiapane. Give it back to Kane. Oh, he had Kane there on the side if he wanted to give him the feed. But Mangiapane elects to shoot and he's saved there by Hellebuck. The Artie brings it into the zone. A pass over to Pionk. Is lost in the shuffle. Orloff picks it up. Gives up to Barry. Patrick Kane with it now. It's 30 seconds left on this net as we pull our goalie and get the extra attacker out there. Pionk with it. Tries to get a pass off, but Arvidsson coming off the bench. Intercepts it over to Olofsson. Back to Carlson, and his shot is blocked by his own player. Olofsson now with it. A weak shot saved by Hellbuck, and our pass back to the blue line goes past back into our zone as Ayafalo picks it up. And they do not get the empty net goal there. Olofsson with it. A couple six ticks left on the clock. His shot is steered away by Hellbuck, and the Winnipeg Jets defeat the Hartford Whalers 4-2 in our regular season debut. All things considered, this is an expansion team, and we played this tough defensive Winnipeg Jets team pretty well. Um, there were some things, obviously, we could have done better. We had some defensive lapses. Um, our, our offensive game couldn't really get going. We didn't get in a good groove there besides uh, some stints there in the second period. And Connor Hellbuck, one of the best goalies in the league, so not much you can say about that. But Hartford drops this game 4-2, to two as um, I'll let it run through here so you can see the top three stars. Blake Wheeler there, the third star, one goal, three hits. That's 37 shots, that's a lot. Um, Patrick Kane, the second star, with one goal and two hits. And four power plays for each team, that's pretty good. I think that's pretty realistic, so... Overall, I'm pretty happy with the sliders. And our first star, Kyle Connor, one goal, one assist, one hit. And there you see that laser he ripped past Matt Murray. Now, to close this episode, we will sim a few games here. So hopefully we could still get our first win, although we may not be able to uh, witness it. But here we go at Anaheim. And uh, it's worth noting they signed Patrice Bergeron in the offseason. So we'll send the first period here as it goes 1-1. One one, Andrew Mangiapane with a power play goal. Second period, 2-2 two two all. So that brings us to a 3-3 game as Comfort gets on the board. 
Patrick Kane scores again, and Patrice Bergeron scores as well for uh, what should be his first goal as an Anaheim Duck. So I'll let the clock kind of wind down here. I'll, I'm not going to... If it gets close down the wire, maybe we'll jump into this one. Actually, I'll, I'll let it go faster so we're not just kind of sitting here in limbo. It's 8x, 8 times is the fastest we can go. Patrice Bergeron there with another goal as Anaheim takes the late lead here in the third period. And will we have some late magic? It doesn't appear that we will. So we'll fall to 0-2 as we lose to the Anaheim Ducks. 4-3. to Take a look at the top three stars, Patrice Bergeron, Zegris, and Drysdale. And um, I'll get some stats as well. So right off the bat, only three players with a plus rating. Uh, Leo Carlson, Barry, and Stanley. And then minus two for Grizzlick, Brown, and Lawton. Um, Grizzlick and Brown's in the, obviously only two games in, but... They didn't have a good uh, good thing going in the, in the preseason either, despite what um, what I was hoping for. So now we'll sim down the line a little bit to St. Louis, as we'll have another home game. All right, let's see. All right, we'll sim this first period. As we were up one nothing on a Mac Rizlik goal, but neighbors and Braden Shen score to put St. Louis up two to one. So in the second period here, and we're still behind, although Patty Kane scores for the third straight game, and Logan Stanley also gets on the board as well. So in this third period, and we're gonna go into overtime here. So Felino and Arvidsson score, Braden Shen uh, ties it up with six minutes left. So we'll jump into this one. We'll check out uh, this overtime period here against St. Louis. And, you know, maybe we'll get to witness our first uh, first win here in this series. So here we go. Lawton on the draw to start overtime. Out there with Patrick Kane and Tyson Berry. Lawton with it. Shoots. And a pad save there. Buchnevich has it into the Hartford zone. Barry can't get it, can't get the puck loose, and Buchnevich still with it after a shot. Gives it back to Piarco, and Buchnevich tries to get a shot off. It's wide. Lawton recovers up to Patty Kane, and he's absolutely drilled, but Barry with it had a lot of space there in front, but Bennington uh, closes the door. Buchnevich with it. Now it's Thomas on a breakaway. Game on his stick. Save, Matt Murray. Tyson Barry picks it up as Hartford has numbers. They can't really get organized, though, as Arvidsson just dumps it in, although he had uh, had Carlson there wide. Arvidsson with the interception. He gets a, a wrister on net, which is saved by Bennington. A minute 54 left in this overtime period. Wow, look at that hit. What was that, 72? I'm not sure who that was. So there you see league leader in goals, and Patty Kane there second with three. Thomas Hurdle for the Sharks leading the way with four goals here so far in the early stage of this season. And Kevin Hayes there for the Blues wins the faceoff as Comfort recovers on a nice hit. Orloff in front, and he tries a move, but it's Kevin Hayes gets him as he loses possession. Falk over to Cairo. Nice uh, stick play there from Olofsson who pokes it away. He'll take it up into the zone. Over to Orloff who gets a shot. Glove save there by Bennington. I thought Orloff was going to finish it there. Kevin Hayes can't keep control with a good defense there from Olofsson. Comper with it. 20 seconds left in here in overtime. Falk will have it, and then he gets uh, taken by Olofsson. He takes it into the zone with some speed. Comfort recovers. A nice shot on goal, and then Olofsson rebound stoned by Bennington. Olofsson with it still. Comfort gets a quick shot, save, three three seconds left. Olofsson with two chances in front, and he can't put home the game winner. So regulation isn't enough. An overtime period isn't enough. This game is going to be headed for a shootout. Some good saves there late by Jordan Bennington. 
Here we go to start this shootout as it looks like St. Louis is going to get the first attempt. Uh, Kairu against Murray. And that's kind of a weak attempt as Murray makes the save. Victor Arvidsson now. Patient and his backhand, his weak backhand attempt does not go. So it's Bucinevich now for St. Louis. And he'll do a few dekes and he's stopped by Matt Murray. And these shootouts can sometimes go on forever. So hopefully this isn't one of those games. And Patty Kane's attempt, he doesn't really even get a shot off. Thomas, stoned. Here's Victor Olofsson with the game on his stick. And he's stopped there by Jordan Bennington. This is Krug, Tori Krug here for St. Louis. And he's stopped by Matt Murray. Now Mangiapani with the game on his stick. Nice move, but he's also stopped by Bennington there. So I believe both sides now 0 for 4 on their power play. Or I'm sorry, on their shootout attempts. Vrana with it. And that's another weak attempt. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to forego watching these shootouts from now on. We'll see. Philip Zadina. Can he put it home? Oh, I thought he was about to do it. He probably came the closest of anyone thus far. All right, so we'll pick it back up here with Braden Shen. <clears throat> nice save there from Murray, showing his flexibility. I actually had to take a break from this because my laptop was about to die. So I paused, and now I'm back. Hopefully we can finish this game here with Tyson Berry. And he had the, he had the net there, top corner, but he couldn't quite finish. As this shootout will continue to drag on, Kevin Hayes with it. A blocker save there from Matt Murray. Dmitry Orlov, let's go, come on. Let's finish this game. Dmitry Orlov tried to go back to his backhand, and it didn't go. He had a lot of space there on the forehand, though. Now Falk for St. Louis. Nice moves there, and he's stoned there by Matt Murray. What round is this? I wish it showed you. I wish it kept track. Matt Grizzlick now, our defenseman. And he almost had it on the backhand. At least it was a snap decision, but Bennington is quick to adjust there on the save. Now Saad. He's stoned by Murray. I wish I could. Uh, it's hard to have enthusiasm here. I mean, you just figure every, every single time it's going to be saved. JT Confer now will get a crack at it. And his shot, wow, he ends up falling over Bennington into the net, but the puck does not end up in the net. And we got Kasperi Kapanen in for St. Louis. A nice rip there, decisive, but it's saved by Murray. And now Nick Cousins will give it a go. Oh my goodness, go forehand. He had so much space there, forehand. Nick Letty for St. Louis. Can't finish. Can they just can we just have a tie for this game? Can we bring back ties? Jake Evans now with the game on his stick. And he scores! Jake Evans gives Hartford their first win since 1997, I want to say, or 99. I could be off on that, but the heart, the point is the Hartford Whalers get their first win here in the series, and it comes on the road, and I'm sorry, at home in a shootout. Jake Evans, that's our guy. Look, let's watch this one more time. We didn't see enough uh, shootout attempts here. Wide open backhand, and, and uh, Bennington's uh, blocker side was open this whole shootout uh, series, it felt, but Hartford gets the win. We prevent a three-game losing streak to start our franchise. And there we go. Salute to the fans. Thanks for watching and thanks for joining. Now, before my 
laptop dies on me real quick. I just want to simulate one more game here at Buffalo. Comes into this game 0-1. We'll just sim it here and leave this episode off at an even four games played. Sim this first period. As Jake Evans gets on the board, our guy, our hero, as uh, we're tied with Buffalo after 1-1-1. One, one one. After the second period, we let up two goals, another goal to Rasmus Dahlin, and Krebs gets on the board as well. And we'll sim another one, and we fall in Buffalo 4-2 to two as Victor Arvidsson uh, gets on the score sheet. I did mean to start Wedgwood in that game, but... Um, Totally slipped in mind in my haste here to get this uh, game sim. So this is where I'm going to leave you as we get a trade off for there. Five and a six for Scott Walker, which is actually a pretty good deal. Um, I don't know how realistic that is, but we'll uh, put that one put that one away for now. Maybe come back to that later on. But I'm going to leave you here. So uh, it's rough that we started our, our home opener, our regular season opener with a loss. But it's nice that we got to see... Our first win here in the series in dramatic fashion as Jake Evans uh, captured the game against St. Louis with a shootout goal to win it for Hartford. As always, thank you so much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe, and I really, really encourage you to leave some comments on your thoughts, whether it's about me, my style, um, our team, really anything. I'm, I'm always here to talk, and I really encourage that. So, as always, it's been real and be well. I'll see you next time. Thank you.